Daddy, what do you do at work? I find a malformed YAML. Seriously, if you're a DevOps professional, I'm 200% sure you're using YAML more than any other technology, to the point that you're probably becoming a YAML engineer. YAML is everywhere. Kubernetes, Docker Compose, Ansible, Salt, Helm, your CI tool, and your cloud provider. Jokes aside, why are you using YAML everywhere? Why not JSON or XML? Before diving into this topic, don't forget to join our weekly DevOps newsletter. Every week we share the best tutorials, tools, and tips from the DevOps community and the latest news. Go to fawn.dev slash join. It only takes a few seconds and it's free. You'll find the links in the description. If you're using containers, which is the case for many of developers nowadays, there's a big chance you're using Docker Compose in development and Kubernetes in production. In both cases, you're using YAML to respectively set up development containers and orchestrate production pods. If you look at the history of computing and software engineering, you'll find that it's a history of increasing abstraction levels. Software engineering evolved from machine code and assembly to procedural and logical to object programming and service-oriented architectures. We skipped too many steps right here, but you've got the idea. Every few years, a developer or a group of developers comes up with a technology that uses a previous one but with a higher level of abstraction. In the age of everything is code, deploying and managing your containers in an imperative way seems to be a bad idea. When you create a Kubernetes deployment, you use declarative management most of the time. In simple words, executing Kubectl apply will delegate to Kubernetes the creation of your Kubernetes objects and resources. You trust Kubernetes and you only describe the state of your cluster. Kubernetes achieves all the necessary steps to reach the described state. This is the case with many other tools like Terraform, Helm Charts, Azure Resource Manager, AWS CloudFormation, PowerShell DSC, and others. YAML here is just the interface to easily access and manage objects and configurations. Kubernetes objects, for example, are persistent entities used to represent the state of a cluster. YAML manifests make describing cluster states straightforward, but this is not the only advantage. By having everything defined in YAML, developers can manage cluster states in a version control tool such as Git. This enables reproducibility and collaboration, and in other cases, it enables more deployment strategies like GitOps. So using YAML in tools like Kubernetes or CloudFormation is not just a choice, it's a necessity. Infrastructure as code, configuration as code, and other as code paradigms need descriptive language. This language should support translating a data structure or object state into a format that can be stored or transmitted and reconstructed later. In simple words, we're talking about data serialization. The question is why don't we use JSON? Most developers are familiar with this technology. It should be a good choice. Well, not at all. YAML is easier for humans to read. It's more human friendly than JSON. YAML is for humans, JSON is for machines. The primary design aim of JSON is simplicity and universality. As a result, JSON is simple to generate and digest at the expense of human readability. YAML, on the other hand, focuses on human readability and capabilities for serializing arbitrary native data structures. As a result, YAML produces highly readable texts but is more difficult to generate and process. All right, you've got it. There's no escape from YAML. At least for now. That was 5 Minutes DevOps. See you tomorrow.